Welcome to the Old Time Radio Superman Show. This is your host, Adam Graham. Um, welcoming you to the program here as we continue. Like I said, I think this is one of the best serials they've done so far, and uh, I can hardly wait to get into this. Uh, before we get started, I encourage you to check out Laser and Sword magazine, lasersword.adamsweb.us. Also, please cast your vote for us on Podcast Alley, podcastalley.com. Uh, very important, as a new month begins, you can cast your vote once a month, and it really is appreciated. All right, but without any further ado, let's go ahead, because we're left with a lot of uh, suspense here, get into the Lighthouse Point, Point Smugglers, Part 5. Presenting the transcription feature, Superman! <laughs> Now, Superman, champion of the weak and the oppressed, valiant fighter for truth and justice, faster than an airplane, stronger than a locomotive, who appeared on Earth from the planet Krypton, who walked about among human beings as mild Clark Kent, news reporter for the Daily Planet. Spending a vacation on the New England coast, Kent and young Jimmy Olsen, copy boy for the Planet City Room, have found that Horn House, the home of Jimmy's Aunt Louisa Horn, is a secret base for smugglers. When we last saw them, Kent and Jimmy had just learned that the stranger they caught signaling from the tower of the abandoned lighthouse was Aunt Louisa's nephew, Christopher Horn. And that the house itself, unknown even to its present owner, was a maze of secret passageways and galleries. Jasper Quinby, local banker, had been found in the middle of the locked kitchen and had been allowed to go before it was realized that he could not possibly have entered in the usual way. After much talk and efforts to revive the unconscious Christopher, the family had retired for the night, and nothing further had occurred. But our story continues at his next morning. Aunt Louisa, Kent, and Jimmy are at breakfast in the dining room. Listen. Thanks, Aunt Lou. I will have another donut. How about you, Mr. Kent? Oh, no, no, thanks, Jimmy. My plate's clean, and I'm going to keep it that way. Say, uh, by the way, Miss Horn... Where did you get these plates? They're mighty pretty. Yeah, I noticed them too, Aunt Lou. Aren't they kind of special? They look Chinese. They are Chinese, Jimmy. My very special Canton set, only used for company. Oh, boy, Mr. Kent, your company. Your great grandfather <laughs> Horn bought them from China 60 years ago, along with the jade. Jade? You mean to say you've got some real Chinese jade, Miss Horn? Uh, not now, Mr. Kent, but we did have. I never saw it, but Land knows I've heard of it. It was the jade that was going to make the family fortune. Where is it now, Aunt Lou? Oh, goodness knows, Jimmy. Sixty years ago, I reckon it's near 65 now, it just vanished. Clean out of sight, between the night and the morning. Oh, Miss Horn, what do you mean? That's what I say, Mr. Kent. I can ain't lost the use of a tongue. One night it was here, right here in Horn House, and next day it was gone. Golly, stolen? We never knew. And we couldn't ask because your great-grandpa was gone, too. Gone where, Miss Horn? Nobody ever knew till they found him two weeks later. Found him? You mean to say... Didn't your ma ever tell you, Jimmy? No, I reckon she couldn't. For on her side of the family. Yes, she was dead. Lying on the beach. They found him at the ebb tide. Sounds just like a mystery novel. And they never found the jade? Never. More's the pity. Was it worth much? Worth much. My land, boy. Jade like that? Well, I reckon it's worth its weight in gold, all right. Grandpa had mighty close to a trunk full. Great Scott. But, Miss Horn, where did he get it? Like I said, from China. He was a clipper captain, Mr. Kent. Every voyage he'd bring back something else. Pictures, wallpaper, dishes. Wallpaper? Don't shout so, Jimmy. It's mighty particular, Grandpa was. I hardly remember him myself, but I've heard Ma tell about him many the time. Had the wallpaper made special for this very room. In Shanghai, I think it was. Oh. This wallpaper here? It's so faded now, you can't make it out. But the picture on that wall shows it was the same pattern. Why, my land. Aunt Lou, what's the matter? My soul and body look there, right on the wall behind you, Mr. Kent. For what? The picture. Where? It's, it's gone. Why, that's so. Golly, I never noticed. Jimmy, did you break that picture and say nothing about it? Me? Gosh, Aunt Lou, what do you take me for, a kid? Uh, I wouldn't put it past you. So, Mr. Kent, what's the matter? He's your nephew. Oh, oh, Christopher. Where's that man, that Quinn? Oh, wait, take it easy. Sit down, man, before you fall. Hey, wait a minute. 
Lie down there on the sofa. No. I'll get you a drink of water. That's Christopher, you no. shouldn't have gotten enough. You should have stayed in bed. Never mind that. There's something I've got to do. We've all got to do. Where's Quinby? Quinby went home. What about him? He, he tried to murder me. What? He tried to murder me while I couldn't help myself. Just for Quinby? Oh, I... Last night he came in and found me. I'd just come to... He... He tried to strangle me there on the couch if it hadn't been for Tiger. Tiger? Gee, Mr. Kent, that's why he went for him. Tiger, he was always crazy about me. Mr. Horn, I think we'd better have an understanding. Yeah, the sooner the better. Why would Jasper Quinby want to kill you? Because he knows I'm on to him. What? He knows I know. So, Christopher, know what? Aunt Lou, I... I had to do it. I had to run with that gang till... till I could find out. What? Find out what? There's a... There's secret passages all, all through the house. Couldn't be found of me. Got into the library and so did I, but it was too late. Too Mr. late. Mr. Horn, what are you talking about? What am I talking about? Aunt Lou, don't you know that the Chinese jade, <laughs> great-grandfather jade, is right here in this house? Wait, why? It Christopher, is. what do you mean? Here in the house, great heavens. Where? Where is it? That's what I don't know, but Jasper Quinby does. Jasper yes, Quinby? Quinby. That's what he was hanging around for. Maybe he was after it last night. Christopher, how does Quinby know about Grand Grandpa Jade? Ask me some more. Ask me how I know. It's in the library, Aunt Lou. It's all in the library, but they never looked. The there. library? All the old log books, everything he wrote on his voyages. I was always a great reader, Aunt Lou. You know that. So I should say I do. I read the logs. I read them all. He'd written it down, old Joshua Horn, what he was going to do. Mr. And... Horn, do you mean to tell me that the hiding place of the Chinese jade is in old Captain Horn's log books? Wait, wait till I tell you. I read them all. I got closer and closer, but when I came to what I needed most, the pages were missing. What? Torn out. And do you know who'd taken them? It was Jasper Quinby. Somehow he knew. Don't ask me how, but he did. Quinby's? Bad lot. All of them. Our people always had trouble with Quinby's. Even way back. Then that's it. Maybe Jasper heard it from his father. Mr. Horn, what was in those log books? A sketch? A chart? I don't know. I know everything else. I know that you can only get into where the jade is a couple times each year. What in sakes, Christopher? What do you mean? I don't know. All I can tell you is what I read in the log books. Maybe it's got something to do with the tides, but that's how it is. Only only a couple of times each year. And right now is one of the times. Jiminy, then you say Quinby knows where it is. He told me he was mighty near it. And that's why he why he wanted the house. He's in the smuggling racket and he's after the jade. And that's why I joined up with it. Aunt Lou so, oh. so as I could find out. Oh, Chris. Chris, I knew you wasn't really bad. I reckon I lost. It's too late. Quinby was in here last night. Before he come in and found me, I, I reckon he got what he needs. Maybe it's a chart. Maybe it's a map. No, not a map. A picture. Mr. Kent, what do you mean? Don't you see? The picture on the wall. The picture that's missing. Oh, my soul. Golly, Mr. Kent, do you think that's it? Aunt Lou, what was it? Why, uh... Why, I don't hardly recollect. Yes, I do, too. It was a picture of some gardens. The Golden Gardens, I think, twas. Well, whatever it was, that's where the secret is, and Quinby knew it. He took it last night. Oh, what fools we were to let him go. We might have known. Mr. Kent, maybe it's not too late now. I don't know. He wouldn't wait long, no longer than he had to. But he wouldn't work by daylight. He'd wait till dark. Where does he live? Quinby? Yes. Lands way back in town. Big white house on the hill. Uh-huh. Mr. Kent, what are you going to do? I'm off. I can't waste time now. Look after Christopher. I'll hurry all I can. There. Well, I never... On earth, what'll happen next? Christopher, what's the matter with him, Aunt Lou? Oh, Mr. Oh, Jimmy. Oh, he'll, he'll be all right, Aunt Lou. Don't you worry. Golly, look. He's right on to where the picture was. Say, Jimmy, what are you looking at? Look, this is funny. All the wallpapers faded out. Except for the picture was. Did it hang here long? Ever since your great-grandpa put it there. Well, look. You can see what the pattern was just as clear as anything. 
My gosh, Aunt Lou. Oh, Jimmy, don't scream like that. It's enough to keep a buddy that jumps. Aunt Lou, did you say back a while ago that the wallpaper was the same as the picture? Didn't you say that? Well, yes, I did. Captain Joshua had the wallpaper made order from the picture. Jimmy! Jimmy, what are you doing standing on your head? Aunt Lou, look here. Oh, my gosh, look. We discovered something, don't you see? See what? The pattern. The Chinese pattern. Turn it around and it's a map. A regular map of Lighthouse Point and Horn House. Look. Jimmy Olsen, you're out of your mind. I'm not. I'm not. No wonder Quinby swiped it. And to think it has been here all these years, just looking right at I us. I don't believe it. It ain't possible. But it is, can't you see? In all those white lines. Aunt Lou, those are the secret passages. Jimmy, I tell you, I don't believe it. And even if it is, what good does it do us? What good does it do us? Don't you understand? Aunt Lou, it means that we can find where the jade is ourselves. Just by following the drawings. Right now, too. And wait. What's this? Why, well, there's writing all around the edge of each pattern. Wait a minute, I'll try to read it. Jimmy, you're making that up. I'm not. Honest, I'm not. Listen. Take twice three turns and two turns more. The water waits behind the door. Turn seven stones. Make haste. For then the sea too soon comes in again. What? That sounds like silly gibberish to me. What's that mean? I don't know, but look. See this long line leading out of the other? With a thing like a sun at the top of it? Aunt Lou, I'll bet that's where the secret room is. And you and I are going to find it. Just as soon as I've cut out this wallpaper. I don't believe you know what you're talking about. Shades of old Captain Joshua Horn. Is the Chinese wallpaper pattern really a map of Lighthouse Point? Does it chart the way to the secret chamber? What is the meaning of the strange rhyme written on the margins of the print? What terrible secret lies in wait at the end of the winding passageways? Tune in next time for the thrilling, unbelievable climax. Follow the story of Superman. Up in the sky, look! It's a plane! It's a plane! It's Superman! Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Action Comics magazine. All right, welcome back. Uh, quite, quite an interesting episode. They, one thing the writers seem to love is having somebody like very sick or dying, saying things incoherently that you've just kind of got to figure out what the heck they're talking about. Um, but so far, very inter- interesting. And I don't actually know how this is going to end. Uh, most of the times, it's kind of predictable. But we've got 11 in- minutes and 10 seconds to wrap it up. Clark Kent is out as Superman doing something. We didn't actually see him doing anything as Superman in this episode. Um, so they've got 11 minutes and 10 seconds to wrap it up. And I can hardly wait. And I don't have to wait. Because we're going to go ahead and listen to the Lighthouse Point Smugglers Part Presenting the transcription feature, Superman! Up in the sky! Look! It's a bird! It's a plane! It's Superman! Now Superman, valiant fighter for truth and justice, mighty champion of the weak and the oppressed, who has appeared on Earth from the planet Krypton with a physical structure never before attained by mortal men. Superman, who is stronger than a locomotive. Faster than a speeding bullet. And walks about among men disguised as Clark Kent, reporter for the Daily Planet. When we last saw them, Kent had gone off to find Jasper Quinby and forced the truth from him. While Jimmy and his aunt, left behind, had suddenly discovered that a sketch showing the location of the hidden chamber, plus a cryptic message apparently giving further directions, was contained in the pattern of an old Chinese wallpaper in the dining room. They determined to follow it at once, even in Kent's absence. As our story continues today, Jimmy and Miss Horn are deep in the passages under Horn House, following turnings toward the sea. But even as they wind through the dim galleries, others are before them. Jasper Quinby and his helper have already reached the secret door. Listen. Pete, we're right on top of it. Don't it sound hollow? Yeah, I'll say it does. Yeah. Old Captain Horn was smart. He was mighty smart. Smart? What do you mean? You know what he done, Pete? Huh? He hid the stuff way down here in a watertight chamber. And then he fixed it so nobody could find it. Not even himself, till everything was just exactly right. Well, what do you mean? I'll show you what I mean. You know where the tide is right now? The tide? Why, sure, it's mighty near dead low. That's right. But that ain't all. 
Now listen good, Pete. Two or three times each year, the tide ebbs real low and comes in real high. You know that, don't you? Well, sure I know it. What of it? Well, now, listen to this. Captain Horn fixed his secret room so you could only get into it just when the tide got real low. Gee. He brought that trunk full of Chinese jade down here to the secret room at dead low tide. He waited till just the right time, and then he went in. But something slipped, and he didn't get out. Ah, uh, but listen, Quinby, how could that be? If he got in, why couldn't he get out? Don't ask me, Pete. Maybe he forgot. Maybe he was half crazy. I don't know about that. But I do know this, because I read it in his own books. He fixed this place so whoever goes in has only got just so long. They got to get in and get out, right at the lowest ebb of the tide. If they don't, if they hang around, the door closes automatically as the water comes in. What do you mean, Pete? That there chamber, back of that wall, connects with the sea. I know that much. And pretty near all the time, it's full of water. Look here. So what you doing, Quinby? I'm pulling out these stones. Watch now. Here's the last one. What he called the keystone. Hey, hey, watch it. There's a lot of water coming out. Put it back. Yeah, you? Put yeah, it back. you bet I'll put it back, Pete. You see that water? That means the chamber's still filled up. But it ain't time yet. Well, what are we going to do? Wait? We'll wait, all right. But not here. We're going down to the dock and make sure the boys are ready with the boat. Come on. And as Quinby and his lieutenant disappear down the passageways, Jimmy and Aunt Lou approach the secret door of the hidden room that the smugglers have just left. Look here, Aunt Lou. Read what it says on the wallpaper I cut from the wall. Take twice three turns and two turns more. The water waits behind the door. The 14th stone, make haste. For then the sea too soon comes in again. I believe Great Grandpa was crazy. It don't make no sense to me at all. It makes sense to me, all right. Look, the passageway's turned eight times, just like it says. And there a wall with a row of stones halfway up. Jimmy, what you doing? Now you be careful. I'm counting up. Eleven... Twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Aunt Lou, this is the fourteenth stone. You be careful. It turns. Golly, it comes right out. Look. Oh, my land. What? Now what? I don't know. Something ought to happen. What did that thing say? The sea too soon comes in again? What's it mean by that? Oh, I don't know. I I guess it was just to make it rhyme. Aunt Lou, look, will you look? My soul and body. The wall was the door in it. And the door's opening up. Jimmy, Jimmy, there's a room in there with water all over the floor. My land. Aunt Lou, look. That's it. That's the secret chamber. It's open and we can go right in. Come on. Oh, it don't hardly seem right. Closed all these years. Oh, Jimmy. Jimmy, look. Look there. Ain't that a chest, ain't it? It's a chest, all right, Aunt Lou. You think that's it? That's it. Great Grandpa Horn's sea chest where he kept the jade. Jimmy, look. Is it locked? Wait. No, no. It's it's fastened down with a kind of a hasp. It's not locked. Well, open it. Open it quick. There it goes. <coughs> Aunt Lou, look. It's full of packages. Little packages all done oh. up. Here, take one and open it. It's wringing wet. Like you've been watering it. Can't understand how that could be. Here. Now, then. Jimmy, look. Aunt Lou. Is that it? Is that the piece of jade? That's it, all right. Oh, Jimmy, we've found it. We've found what's been hid all these years. We've got a fortune. I won't have to sell the house. Oh, Jimmy, Jimmy. Oh, steady, Aunt Lou. Don't cry. I'm not, I'm not crying. I'm just as uh, happy. Oh, dear. Jimmy, look at it. It ain't a big chest, but it's full to the top. You say it's worth a lot of money, Aunt Lou? Oh, my land, yes. Goodness knows how much. If poor mother only had it, if she'd only known. Oh. What's that, Aunt Lou? What? The door. Quick, quick. Why, what happened? It's just loose. Shut Jimmy, uh, go get it open again. I'll Jimmy, try. Quick. I'll go try, on. Aunt Lou. Uh, Come here and push. Come on, Aunt Lou. Wait a minute. What's that? I hear something. Listen. Water. There's water coming out of that hole in the wall. Aunt Jimmy, Lou. a chest. That's why it was wet. There was water in the room. It was full of water. It's filling up again. Jimmy, that's what's wrong with Captain Joshua. Oh, Jimmy, get that door. That blue push on it. Make push it hard. Look at oh, the water. It's coming up fast. It's all oh, around my ankles. Mr. Kent, help. Help, Mr. Kent. Superman, who went off to find Jasper Quinby at his home, has not been successful and has now returned to Horn House. Jimmy! 
Jimmy Olsen? Jimmy, where are you? Miss Horn. Huh. That's queer. I wonder what's happened. Well, maybe they're upstairs with Chris. Oh, Jimmy. Oh, hello, Tiger. Good dog. All right, Tiger. Now, keep out of my way, Tiger. Run along. Find a bone. That's a good dog. Run along, will you? I'm looking for Jimmy and Miss Horn. Wait a minute, Tiger. What, well, what's the matter with you? Wait, now. What do you want? Uh, let go of my coat, Tiger. Tiger, drop that. Take your feet off me. They're all muddy. What? Now, wait. What, what is it, Tiger? What do you want, boy? Is Jimmy down in the cellar? Is that what you want? You want me to follow you? Great heavens. They're in trouble. That's what the dog wants. They're down in the galleries. Something's happened. Tiger. Good dog now. Good dog. All right, now go on. Go on. Go find Jimmy. Find Miss Horn. That's a good dog. I'm right with you, Tiger. Go on. Go on. Dog on your feet. I told you not to waste all that time. I couldn't help it, Quinby. Now, there's a good chance we're too late. The tide will be back in the chamber. Uh, here we are. Here's the wall. Mr. Kennedy, hold on. Hey, Quinby. Listen. What's that? Voices. Voices in the room. Here. Pete. It's the kid and the old woman. Pete. They're in there and the tide's got them. Oh, Lord, Quinby. How'd they do it? They're caught. They're caught sure, Pete. Come on. Get out of this. I don't want no part of it. We've got to get away. Listen. I hear a dog. Someone's coming. Run. Run back to the boat. Maybe the water comes in here too. Run, Pete. I'm getting out of here for good. Run. Run. Tiger. Go on, Tiger. Where are they? Don't stop there. That's just a wall. Wait. Great heavens. They're in the secret room. They're caught. They're drowning. Tiger, keep back, boy. This is a job for Superman, and I must work fast. Look out. Jimmy! Jimmy, I'm coming! There we are. Mr. Kent! Mr. Kent, I knew you'd come! Quick, Jimmy! My heavens, it's a mill race! Run! Run back up the gallery! Miss Horn! I'm all right. I don't need no help. Quick, come on, Aunt Lou. Quick. Mr. Kent, that chest. Run. Run on ahead as fast as you can. There's water coming all the time. Hurry, we'll be caught. Oh. There they go. Now the chest. Just make it. Oh. Ah. Just in the nick of time. Oh, thank heavens, they're out. Now up with the chest. There. Uh, you drink your tea, huh? I'm going up to see Chris. Is there anything more you want? No, thanks. Got plenty, Aunt Lou. Plenty here. <laughs> and I can use a little nourishment, I'll tell you. Before I go, Mr. Kent, I... I just want to say... This. No, 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 no. Don't you say a word, Miss well, Horn, please. you got us out of that dreadful place. You brought back Captain Joshua's chest. And now... Well, we've got the Horn family, Jade, and... and yes, I... and Jimmy and I have a tremendous story for the paper. Don't forget that. Come on there, young fella. Get a move on. Get that tea down in a hurry. We'll go find the nearest telegraph office. You betcha. Everybody's safe and sound after an exciting, almost fatal adventure in the mysterious galleries of Horn House. And another scoop for the Daily Planet is delivered by Clark Kent. But what's coming next? Already back in the planet offices, another adventure is waiting. Thrilling, incredible. Tune in next time and follow the story of Superman. Up in the sky, look! It's a bird! It's a plane! It's Superman! Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Action Comics magazine. All right, welcome back. And I thought a pretty good ending. A very solid series. You didn't hear any villains talking right up until the middle of this episode. And that was, I think, entirely necessary. They weren't giving away a whole lot other than how the, how the, contra the contraption worked. Uh, this, uh, this episode, it does kind of, str 
uh, it, it does challenge your imagination a little bit here. Because every time his voice goes up, but no, oh, he's Superman, I imagine he, he changes clothes. But he's pulling, but he, it just seems like maybe any time he does anything Superman-ish, even if he doesn't change his clothes into the Superman uniform, uh, he's got to change his voice. Uh, for some reason he couldn't talk, I don't know what he would do. Uh, but, uh, again, a very nice episode, very good conclusion here. Um, and I think it was, inc I think it was just probably the best so far, and hopefully it'll only get better from here. All right, well, I encourage you once again, check out Laser and Sword Magazine, lasersword.adamsweb.us. And please cast your vote for us at podcastalley.com. For now, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.